Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to make a weapon in Unreal Engine. So follow along and in about 10 minutes you'll have a weapon just like I have. Now the weapon I'm going to show you looks a little bit different in this video because I was using paid marketplace assets. So ours is actually going to use this free AK-47 model. And what I'll do is I'll put the link in the description to the GitHub. All you have to do is go here and click on download and you can download the starter content for this project. It's literally just an empty project, but it's got a bunch of the weapon assets in it that we'll be using for this video. Once you've downloaded the starter project, just right click on weapon, generate Visual Studio project files, and then just open the Visual Studio project up. Next up, just right click on the weapon project and set it as your startup project. And then make sure development editor and Win64 are selected and then hit the local Windows debugger. Today's video is going to be pretty simple. We're going to do a really basic weapon implementation. So if you're well versed in UE4, you might find this to be rather boring. This is more for the beginner Unreal Engine enthusiast. The next step is to go to the marketplace and grab the FPS weapon bundle. And I'll put the link to this in the description. It is completely free to download and it is permanently free as well. And then just click on add to project and add it to the project that you just downloaded from GitHub. So with that done, you should have an empty first person uh, template. And you can see here we have the FPS weapon bundle. And it has all these different weapons in here. So if you want to customize this and change your weapons out, you can do that as well. So the template comes with some really basic shooting. And what we're going to do is just build on top of this shooting uh, to do some more particle effects and create a more traditional gun rather than one that just shoots these ball actors. All right, so let's close the editor and we'll go to our code. Uh, we could make a weapon actor, but I'm not going to do that today. I'm just going to build on the shooting that's already in this project. So we'll open up the weapon character because this is where the shooting goes down in this project. Find the line that says on fire and we're going to replace this with three separate lines. We have start fire, stop fire and fire shot. Start fire is when we uh, start uh, holding down the fire button. Stop fire is when I release. And fire shot is actually going to fire a shot from the gun. It's also going to do some ray casting. And in this video, we'll have a fully automatic assault rifle instead of the template, which has a semi-automatic gun. So you want to create implementations of these functions. I'm using Visual Assist, so I can actually do this a little bit easier. But if you don't have Visual Assist, you'll just have to type what I'm uh, putting here out manually. So when you're done, you'll have these three functions. In the setup player input component of our weapon character.cpp, I'm simply just going to replace the on fire with a start fire and stop fire. And we need to handle this a little bit differently because I want the weapon to be fully automatic. So when I press the fire key, it's going to call start fire. And when I release it, it's going to call stop fire. Let's go ahead and add some properties to our weapon now. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll just take this fire animation here and let's just copy and paste this. This time I'm going to call this float time between shots. And I'll say the seconds to wait between shots. In our start fire function, we're just going to call our fire shot function. And then what we'll do is we'll use the timer system to actually keep calling our fire shot function over and over again so that our weapon is fully automatic. To do this, we just get the world time manager and then set a timer. And we actually need to give it a timer handle. So I'm going to come into where my functions are and underneath them, I'm just going to put timer handle, handle refire. You don't have to define a timer handle, but I'm just doing it here because why not? And then in here, I'm going to put the time between shots. So this is going to call the fire shot function again every time between shot seconds. And true here on the end means that this is a looping timer. It should be called over and over again. Inside of my stop fire function, all I'm going to do is stop the timer by doing get world timer manager clear timer. And so when I release the fire key, it should stop calling this function over and over again. So above the start fire function, I have my old shooting function, the on fire function. I'm just going to take this and I'll get rid of this spawning part because we don't want to shoot these projectiles anymore. But I will keep the part where we play the animation and the sound because I still want the gun to do that. So I'm just going to put that inside of my fire shot function. And then we'll get rid of this. So in its current state, my weapon is going to play a sound and an animation. But I want to do a little bit more than this. I want it to do a ray cast and then spawn some gunshot particles and stuff like that as well. So let me show you how to do a ray cast. 
In Unreal Engine, we actually refer to a raycast as a line trace, and we're going to use this to see if our bullet actually hit anything. The first thing that it wants is a hit result, and this is what it will store all of the hit result params in. So we're going to make a hit result, and we'll just call it hit. The next thing we need to know is where is our bullet starting from and where is it ending? And in most games, you shoot from your camera. So we're going to do start trace is equal to my camera's location. And we need to come up with some sort of range value. I'm going to say that all the guns in my game have a range of 200 meters. So 20,000 means uh, 20,000 centimeters. And so my end trace is going to be my camera's forward direction multiplied by the range plus the camera's start location. The last thing we want to do is tell our trace to ignore our character. AKA, we shouldn't be able to shoot at ourselves, obviously. So if the line trace hits us, then something went wrong. So we want to just ignore the character. We're going to make some query params here. And uh, I've set up a, uh, a statistic thing here for weapon traces. I wouldn't worry too much about this. This is more for profiling. Um, but we're also saying that we don't want to do complex tracing. And we want to ignore this as in don't hit our character with this line trace. Now we're just gonna put all of our params into this function and now it's going to do a line trace through the world. And we can check if our line trace hit something by using an if statement because it returns a true or false value. So we can just say if our line trace hit something. To spawn particles, I'm gonna come down here to where my uh, time between shots is and I'm just gonna add a couple of more variables here. We've got uh, impact particles and muzzle particles. So there's two different particles we're gonna spawn. If we hit something, I want to spawn the impact particles and we do that using U gameplay statics, spawn emitter at location. And for the muzzle particles, we do the same thing except it's not going to be in the if statement because I always wanna spawn muzzle particles regardless of whether the bullet actually hit something or not. And we're using the socket transform of the uh, muzzle socket. There is a socket already on the gun for you called muzzle. So you don't have to worry about that. Just give it the name muzzle and it will spawn the particles in the right place. So like I said, today we're just keeping it really simple. I just want to show beginners how to do a basic weapon because it's a uh, question that comes up a lot. Okay, so the last thing you want to do is go to the begin touch function because the game is set up by default to run with a touch screen. When you touch the screen, we just want to call the function called fire shot instead of the old function that we got rid of. So just replace on fire with fire shot and then go ahead and save and run the debugger and everything should work fine. So let's test this out in the game. Okay, so we'll go to first person CPP, go to blueprints and then open up our character here. And we're gonna set the muzzle particles to assault rifle IH. And we'll set, oh sorry, the impact particles should be the IH one and the muzzle particles should be gunshot. And uh, right off the bat, without replacing our gun, let's just try this out. So we'll hit play, hold down the fire button, and you can see that this works. Now the uh, the cross here is weird. The default cross here that comes with this project is not centered. It's not our code that sucks, it's the Unreal Templates cross here code. So uh, you can remove the cross here if you want. Um, it's pretty easy to do, you just set the HUD class to be null if you want to do that, but I'm not too worried. Let me show you now how to actually replace the default gun. We're going to come into the character, and if we click on the FP gun, we can change this out to one of the guns from the pack. I'm going to use the KA-47. But the next problem is how do we actually get the gun looking good in the game? Because if you hit play, it's not going to be in a very good looking position by default. So let's go ahead and actually uh, launch a new editor window. And while the editor window is still open, what I'll do is I'll just search for skeleton and just have a look for the player skeleton. It should be called SK Mannequin Arms and open it up. And in this skeleton is a socket that the weapon attaches to and the skeleton socket is called grip point. So if you click on grip point, you can rotate the socket and you'll see that the gun actually updates in real time. You can press W if you want to move it around. So we could go ahead and just move it to a place that looks a little bit nicer. And so that looks pretty good to me. The only problem is that the hand is not on the AK-47. Now if we were doing the animations ourselves, this would be fine. We would just animate the hand so that it attaches to the AK properly. But because this is Unreal's uh, default animation, I guess what we'll do is just edit the animation. So to fix it, you'll want to move both the socket around and also try moving the arms around. You can just click on the arms and you can see that I can move the arms around as well. And so using both of these, you can get the gun to look a lot better than it usually would. 
uh, but the best solution would be to have an animation that actually matches this gun. So from here, go ahead and uh, try to switch the guns out, and maybe try some other guns as well. Uh, but yeah, basic weapon tutorial for people that are just starting Unreal. I can do a more advanced one, maybe a networked one or something like that. In fact, I do networked guns in my uh, course if you want to check that out. Anyways, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any suggestions, uh, leave a comment and I'll get around to it. Alright guys, see you later.